In this video, we continue to talk about how the model gives energy changes with pressure and with temperature. Our starting point is a graph of the model gives energy with respect to temperature, uh, in which we can see the three lines for uh, the three phases of a substance and uh, how they appear in the diagram. And this tells us what the stable phase uh, of the substance is at any particular uh, temperature. And for this, we have that the pressure is constant. Okay, so what we have learned is that uh, much as we knew, uh, at high temperatures, the gas is the stable phase because that uh, is the phase that has lowest molar Gibbs energy. At low temperatures, the solid is the stable phase because the solid has the lowest molar Gibbs energy. And at intermediate temperatures, you have the liquid phase stable. Okay, this is a substance that would not undergo sublimation, like water at one bar. Okay, uh, notice that there's two crossings that are of significance in this graph. One of them is the crossing between the liquid and gas line. The other one is the crossing between uh, the solid and liquid line, and that determines situations of equilibrium when you have the two phases coexisting. Uh, now, the way that we usually draw this line is, is we say that that is the evaporation line, but very commonly, this is written also as the boiling uh, point, okay? Now, there is a difference between vaporization and boiling. Okay, so boiling uh, is a special case for vaporization in which the uh, uh, external pressure is identical uh, to the vapor pressure of this liquid. Okay, so that's, that's kind of a, a little convoluted right now, uh, uh, but essentially uh, what this means is that you can have this, this type of vaporization if the vapor pressure, again, of the liquid, and we'll explain uh, what that means a little bit later on, uh, that is identical to the external pressure. Under those conditions, you see the bubbling okay, uh, of the liquid, and that's what we call uh, uh, boiling. You can, you can have vaporization with a boiling, right? If we put here uh, a drop of sweat in our skin, uh, that will vaporize without boiling. Okay, so that equilibrium can happen on your skin, okay, without boiling. Uh, and again, that means that, that evaporization can take place without boiling. Okay, great. Now, the next uh, uh, point that we're going to discuss is see how this diagram uh, would be affected by a change in pressure. Okay, so uh, we're actually going to increase the pressure and then see how these lines that we have drawn right here would change. Uh, it's the other way around. Okay, so P2 is going to be a larger pressure than P1. All right, to figure this out, uh, uh, then what we're going to do is take any point in any of the lines, say for example this one, and then see how the molar gives energy, which is this function, would be affected by pressure. Okay? To do that, we refer to the original expression that tells us the dependence of the molar Gibbs energy on pressure and temperature. Then we would freeze the temperature, which means that in this graph we're just going to be moving uh, at constant temperature, that means in a vertical direction. And then we'll see what happens to the molar Gibbs energy when you, when you increase the pressure, which is what we're trying to do here. Okay, well, notice that uh, when you, this is the dependence of the molar Gibbs energy on pressure, right? So if you increase the pressure, that means that the Gibbs energy increases according to the value of the molar volume, okay? So for a gas, we know that the molar volume is very large compared to that of the liquid or the solid phases. That means that if we increase the pressure, then the uh, molar Gibbs energy is going to increase by quite a lot, okay? So uh, at this point, uh, at a pressure P2, which is higher than P1, would be offset, okay? And this difference is proportional to the molar uh, volume of the gas. All right, you can do this then for any single other point in the line. For example, take that one and then do exactly the same thing, right? So that point is going to increase. Uh, you will have that that will be offset like this and you can do it for every single point in the line. And eventually what this is going to mean is that you're going to have a new line, okay, which is going to be like this, parallel to the original line that you have. Okay, it should be parallel more or less. Uh, and uh, uh, notice that the slope doesn't change, right? Notice that the variation of this molar Gibbs energy with temperature should be the same. In both cases, that slope is equal to the minus molar entropy of the gas. And here is the minus molar entropy of the gas as well. That minus molar entropy of the gas doesn't change much with the pressure that is an, an approximation that we're making. So let me see if I can write that here. That slope is still the minus molar entropy of the gas. Okay, and because we're considering that these changes in pressure are not great, then that, that, that should not change the slope of the, of the line. Okay, great. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing for the solid and the liquid, right? So uh, uh, essentially we just examine how these lines, the, the solid and the liquid, how those would change for an increase in pressure. Well, again, much as before, we increase the pressure, then the molar Gibbs energy should increase accordingly to the molar volume. 
but here's an important um, thing to think about. Okay, uh, the molar volume of the liquid and the solid are going to be much smaller than the molar, mo molar volume of the gas. Okay, for the case of water and ambient conditions, we know that the difference is about a factor of a thousand, a little bit over, over a thousand, right? So it means that the offset between these lines in the gas and the liquid and the solid is going to be huge, okay? Uh, uh, so the difference in the offset, right? So the, the gas lines will be offset by a lot, and the uh, liquid and solid line won't be offset by as much. Okay, so let me see if I can do that. Okay, for the liquid, I'm just going to draw it like this. Uh, here is the line of the liquid. Okay, so that is the uh, how the line would look like at a higher pressure. And then for the solid, I am going to draw it also on top. Okay, but offset by much less than for the gas. Okay, something that should be apparent here is that I've chosen to offset the liquid line a little bit more than the solid line, and there is a reason for that. Okay, it turns out that for more substances, for most substances, the molar volume of the liquid is greater than the molar volume of the solid. That means that when you have uh, the liquid and you freeze it, then uh, that system contracts. The volume goes down by a little bit. And again, that happens for most uh, substances except for water. Okay, water is exactly the opposite to run. When you actually decrease the temperature, then uh, the volume expands. Okay, and we'll have to examine how that will change this, this graph uh, in the next video. But for now, what we can actually see is what happens to the crossings of the lines under the new pressure. Okay, so now we examine here uh, on the red lines and see what the crossings are. And we see that, well, uh, the crossing between the gas and liquid lines now occurs at this particular point. Right? So that is your new boiling point uh, at a pressure P2. And then the freezing point uh, takes, uh, takes place up here. Okay, that would be your freezing point here. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. We see that we can actually change the freezing point and the boiling point of a substance, okay, by changing the pressure. Okay, when you increase the pressure to this substance, and again, this can be anything that is not water. Okay, uh, uh, notice that the boiling point goes up, that means that you can get the liquid hotter than at lower pressure without uh, transforming into the gas. And the freezing point also goes up. That means that you can get the solid past the original uh, uh, fusion point uh, uh, without uh, that solid turning into the liquid. Okay, only when you get to this temperature, you will actually see uh, uh, that the solid turns into the liquid. Okay, something that is also uh, interesting to note is that the uh, difference in the uh, boiling points is a little bit larger than the difference between the freezing points, and this is something that also happens uh, quite frequently. Okay, so this is how pressure affects uh, uh, the phases uh, or the temperature uh, dependence of the phases of a substance, okay, for a substance that is not water.